we're going to learn how to use the inverse. So here's our first problem. We have 15 divided by some unknown quantity, which will be represented by a triangle, equals 3. So usually math goes from left to right. But to do the inverse, what we will do is we will reverse the order and change the sign. So now we have 3 times triangle equals 15. In this next example, we're going to start off with 24 divided by our unknown quantity. In this case, a square equals 8. So to do the inverse, we're going to reverse that order and change the sign. So we're going to have it as 8 times our square equals 24. All right, in this case, we have an unknown first, so a triangle times 4 is going to equal 16. As always, we will reverse the order for the inverse and change the sign. So now we have 16 divided by 4 equals our unknown quantity triangle. All right, in this example, we have 36. We're going to divide that by 6 equals our unknown quantity. Once again, we reverse the order. We have our unknown quantity. Reverse the sign times 6 equals 36. For our final problem, we can't forget about the commutative property of multiplication. So once we have 28 divided by triangle equals 7, we could write that as using the inverse 7 times triangle equals 28. But because of the commutative property, we may see it as triangle times 7 equals 28. The commutative property of multiplication states that if 6 times 4 equals 24, then it is known that 4 times 6 also equals 24, which lets us know that if we are only multiplying, the order in which we multiply does not make a difference. The associative property of multiplication is also important. If I look at the example 3 times 5 times 2, we can do 3 times 5, that's going to equal 15. Then we take that 15 and multiply it by 2 to equal 30. Or we could do 5 times 2 equals 10, and then take 3 times 10, and that will also equal 30. So the order in which we multiply it really does not make much of a difference. So the distributive property says that if we know that 8 times 5 equals 40, and that 8 times 2 equals 16, then we can find what 8 times 7 is as thinking about it as 8 times 5 plus 2 because that equals 7. So we're going to distribute that 7 across our problem, and that's going to equal 8 times 5 plus 8 times 2, which is going to equal 40 plus 16, which equals 56.